What's going on, YouTube? Hope life has been good to every one of you out there. This world's a tough place. Gotta enjoy life when we can. Now let's get straight to the point. I'm making this video to introduce some of the equipment that I've acquired since my last safe night riding EUC video. If you haven't seen that video and you recently acquired an EUC or plan to acquire one in the near future, or even if you already have one and are interested in going on a night ride, maybe with your local PEV community, click here to watch that video. In that video, I discuss the equipment I use, but I focus on the night riding aspect. Now that I have been riding an EUC for over a year, putting about 3,000 miles on my RS-19, I want to discuss the new gear I've added to my collection and briefly go over the gear that I've continued to use since day one. This new gear I've picked up has been game changing for me and hopefully for you as well. I'll start off by giving you a snapshot of my commute and the obstacles I face. At least once a month, I ride my RS-19 high speed to work, which consists of a 40 mile commute between Hercules, California and Oakland, California. Yes, I said Oakland, California, the home of the sideshow and the place where you better stop when you cross through a green light or you may get hit in the intersection. In a worst case scenario, the other driver would just take off. Due to my work hours, I regularly ride home at night around 2 a.m. So proper lighting is of the highest importance to me. Through my first year of riding, I have to admit it, it hasn't been accident free. I've had a few bad spills, but for the most part, my equipment protected me from any major injuries. But I did suffer some pain in my butt and my hip, which gives me a good transition point into the first piece of newly acquired equipment I like to discuss. I purchased these Alpine Star Pro shorts due to their sleek design. I wear these shorts whenever I plan to go out for a full day of riding or even if I plan to go out for a short hard ride with a lot of carving and some jumping involved. I often do this style of riding around my neighborhood to keep my skills sharp. These Alpine Star shorts look the business. I like the red and black color scheme as well as the high hip padding that comes up over the waistline. They have plenty of padding to protect my hips, tailbone, thighs, and crotch. Yes, it has padding for your crotch. This is primarily because these are dirt bike shorts and you will need that crotch padding for landing those big jumps. Shouldn't all pants have crotch protection? Now let's talk about my criticisms on these shorts. First and foremost is the fact that they still don't protect my butt cheeks, my soft spots. As I stated earlier, my butt cheek got injured during one of my hard falls. After sliding on it for about 10 yards, using my glutes to go from 25 miles per hour to zero miles per hour faster than the supercar, my fatty tissue suffered from dragging across the tarmac. It felt like road rash, but oddly enough, there was no visible damage except some minor swelling. But because these shorts don't have proper butt padding, I will have to replace these shorts at some point in time for ones with better protection for my rear. The second criticism is the construction. I wore these shorts twice for short distances and the stitching started coming out of the left hip padded area. I guess they don't use the best manufacturing when putting these together. Lastly, I find that they slide down my hips frequently. Interestingly enough, these are labeled as 2XL but were advertised as one size fits all. I just can't recommend these due to the butt padding issue. I could compromise with the stitching and fit. The missing butt padding is tragic. Okay, this is going a little bit off script, but when I decided to purchase these shorts, I primarily made the decision because of the other protective shorts that I've seen had huge butt pads, and I didn't want to be looking like Kim Kardashian with a big old fake butt when I ride my RS-19. Oh, All right, back to the script.
The next item that I purchased is the Force Field Body Armor Pro Shirt XV2 Air. It's a lot. This is a protective shirt, although some may call it a jacket because it does have a zipper. On Force Field's website, they call it a shirt, so call it what you want to. But let me tell you, this shirt has changed my life. Why, you ask? Well, first, on hot days, I can wear this shirt by itself and have great ventilation due to the material it's made out of. Second, I can have CE Level 2 high impact protection all in the spots that I need it. My BMW mesh jacket came with CE Level 1 padding and cost twice as much when it was new. Some may ask, so why would you need two pieces of gear that do the same thing, meaning this shirt and my jacket? Well, I say, great question. That's because my BMW mesh jacket works great to keep me at comfortable temperatures from about 49 degrees Fahrenheit to about 85 degrees. That's where the force field shirt comes in. It keeps me comfortable at temperatures between 65 degrees Fahrenheit and up. Another benefit to this shirt is that if you are caught out and the weather changes on you, like it does here in the Bay Area often, you can always throw a jacket or a sweater over it. How awesome is that? As you can tell, this shirt has back, chest, shoulder, elbow padding, all rated at CE level two. But like everything in life, you can't have the good without the bad. The bad part is that this shirt is expensive. At $289 on both Revzilla and Cycle Gear, I was gonna leave this shirt on the hanger at the stove. That was until I found it for less than half price on a website called Absolute Snow. The funny thing is that they are located in the UK, but they shipped this thing to me in two days. I don't know how they did that. There's a lot of other companies that need to learn from these guys. I'm not saying any names. I highly recommend buying from these guys. Not only was their pricing better than everyone else's, their shipping and customer service was great as well. My next piece of gear is controversial within the EUC community. The next item I purchased is a tether bungee cable. As stated earlier, this item has been controversial amongst the EUC community. What I've seen in forums and on YouTube critiques is that there are three types of people in the EUC community. Ones that like tethers, ones that think they are unsafe, and those that like them in specific use scenarios. The people that support tethers feel as if they are necessary insurance to prevent further harm not only to the EUC, but to other people or private property, especially if you happen to fall in a busy crowded area, say at 35 miles per hour. But on the other side of the spectrum, some people think you're essentially tying a 60 plus pound device with the potential energy to propel a 250 pound person to 35 miles per hour or more is a safety hazard in itself. Now before you flood my comment section with your opinion, I've already considered the good and the bad and have chosen the side to stand on. What I do know is that every time I've crashed, my EUC was damaged, but only after rolling off on its own and hitting a curb. To this day, I thank God it didn't hit someone's car traveling in the opposite direction of traffic that I was going, or in a worst case scenario, jump over a curb and hit a pedestrian which could easily be a senior citizen or a young child or a baby. I couldn't live with that. I'd rather cause injury to myself than someone else who didn't choose to ride in the UC that day. Now, when trail riding in the mountains or riding near water, I find tethering as an absolute necessity. All the videos I've seen of people with EUCs going into a bed of water or off the side of a cliff is just sad and unnecessary. So why not invest in a little bit of insurance? The next item I purchased is the Guardian Angel Elite Series Personal Safety Light Bar. Just as the force field shirt changed the game for me as a wearable gear, so did the GA lights for light gear. These aren't just any lights, they are some of the best wearable strobes you can get. 
You can change the light configuration from the strobe to solid, which helps when you're in the dark areas, as you can see from the video. You can also choose between different color strobes, like yellow and white, red and white, blue and white. They even have some of the law enforcement ones with blue, red, and white. I highly recommend that you get these if you want to be safe riding at night. They cost about $100 each. I have two of them. I wear one on each arm. They are well worth the cost. These were actually recommended in the comments section by one of my viewers on my Safety First on Bugatti Gotway RS19 EUC video. If you haven't seen that yet, click here. Shout out to Jay Chen for the recommendation and Mad Pack for reviewing them. The last piece of equipment that I've recently purchased is the Aclamile electric bike horn. This is another game changing device. This horn is powered by a non removable battery, but which can be charged via USB C. It can be controlled by either a wire button permanently affixed to the horn or from a wireless key fob style remote control. With this key fob, you can set the horn for motion sensing. So if the horn moves, it will sound an alarm. You get both safety and security from this one device. I have been hit by a car once while riding my EUC, and I've had so many close calls I can't count the amount of times. As always, distracted drivers are the most dangerous aspect of riding with PEV. So I figured if I could get the driver's attention, then I would definitely reduce my chances of getting hit by that driver. And believe me, I was right. This horn has saved me on numerous occasions. Often when I'm splitting lanes or in the bike lane, I just hold the button and allow the horn to announce my presence. It may be annoying for some, but it gets the other driver's attention. All right, let's briefly go over some of the gear that I've been using for the last year. Shout out to Alien Rides and PEV Works for introducing me to this gear since day one. I don't have to say much about this piece of equipment because almost everyone has one. If you are new to the EUC community and were intrigued by that guy that shot past you on their EUC at about 35 plus miles per hour as you were pedaling your bike like a madman in the bike lane at about 15 miles per hour, the first thing you probably noticed was that person's helmet. At least that was my experience when I first saw someone riding an EUC. The benefits of this helmet is that it is super lightweight when compared to the traditional motorcycle helmet. It also provides you with a wider opening for better peripheral visibility. If you don't like the tinted visor, it comes with a clear one. If you don't want to wear a visor at all, you can easily remove it and wear your favorite protective eyewear. On top of all those benefits, ultimately, this helmet looks good. To others, you look like you just entered the Earth's atmosphere from another planet, especially while riding your EUC. People just stare at you unconsciously. I haven't provided a link for this jacket because BMW has a new model, the Airflow 3. I don't believe the Airflow 2 is selling new anymore, but you can probably pick one up secondhand like I did. I have had this jacket since I purchased my EUC and it has been worn through every fall that I've experienced. It has taken some abuse and has held up well. I recently replaced the damaged CE Level 1 elbow pads with Force Field's own Isolator 2 elbow pads, the same pads that come with the Force Field shirt. Other than a small rip in the shoulder, of which occurred after one of my falls, this jacket has held up well. Some light abrasion from sliding on the tarmac but after putting it in the washing machine, it still looks good. I use the Lexan motorcycle gloves. I was wearing these during my first crash and although they shredded up like newspaper, I didn't have a scratch on my hands, so I consider that a win. They are comfortable, flexible, and have knuckle protection as well as fingertip touch screen capability. 
I use the FlexMeter D30 wrist guards. Some may not like these because they're restrictiveness, but let me tell you, when you fall with these, it's like your wrists, palms, and knuckles will be in a bubble of protection. During my two biggest falls, I just slid on my palms with these wrist guards. It tore the fabric a bit, but I was able to walk away with no pain or injuries to my wrist or fingers. I don't think I need to say much about these either. Like the TSG helmet, the majority of the EUC community uses these. If you choose not to wear the Liat dual axis knee guards, I bet you go through a tedious process of putting them over your pants or taking your pants off to put them on and then putting your pants on over them. All this extra time will eventually lead to you not even wearing them at all. That's where the Liat's shine. They go on and off easy and protect your knees and shins like turtle shells. The only time I've seen videos of people wearing these things where they ended up with minor scratches after a fall was because they weren't properly tightened or they went down extremely hard, but which they were lucky to be wearing the Leads. There are more expensive options out there, but these are the best bang for the buck in my opinion. They have kept me safe during my two biggest crashes. Please don't try to save money here by buying cheap knee pads. Just like a Tesla, there's a reason why everyone's getting them. I use these Zero Shoes Excursion Hiking Boots. I can't really call these protective boots because they don't have any hard shell. But what I love about them is the fact that these are minimalist shoes. So the shoe is lightweight with a thin sole, allowing you to feel exactly what's going on with your EUC. Think of it this way. Your feet are the direct means of controlling your EUC. This is also the communication point between your EUC and your body. So when you wear thick hiking boots, as I did when I started riding, you lose some of that communication and translation. Or simply said, you can't feel what the EUC is telling you. This can lead to increased chances of falling due to uncontrollable wobbles, delayed response when trail riding on dirt, or not feeling a tire going flat, which almost happened to me. Additional benefits are they have great ankle support because they are boots and they're completely waterproof. I hope you like the content. Please like and subscribe. Like always, ride safe.